Is Dungeon Keeper as good as you remember? Today we're going to take an in-depth, retrospective look at the 1997 classic PC game, Dungeon Keeper. I wanted to do this video justice because before recording, this game was one of my pinnacle childhood games that I've always had mounted on the highest of high pedestals. Was all of that nostalgia ruined for me? Let's find out. Before we start, I would absolutely love to hear your favourite memories or moments from anyone who has ever played Dungeon Keeper in the past. And if this video makes you decide to pick it up or check it out at all, please return and let me know what you thought of the game. Even if anyone didn't enjoy it or gave up after the first few levels or when it gets difficult, I want to hear every single person's opinions on this 25 year old game. We're going to start in a way that helps those poor lost souls who have never had a chance to play Bullfrog's Crown Jewel. Dungeon Keeper is a dungeon management game in which you'll be playing as the forces of evil, buried deep underground in your dungeon collecting and attracting powerful and terrifying creatures to face off against and annihilate the puny good guys. Because it's good to be bad. Okay, now that you're acquainted with the basic premise, let's jump in for real and talk about Dungeon Keeper. This year, the game turned 25 years old, literally one year younger than myself. Few have tried to recreate this game, the likes of War for the Overworld, Dungeons, and even the god-awful Dungeon Keeper mobile game but none, in my opinion, seemed to have quite the magic and appeal that Dungeon Keeper had. But maybe that was just nostalgia talking. All of my replaying of this game was done on the fan-made Keeper FX, which makes the game much more playable on modern systems and also fixes tons of bugs. When I say a lot more difficult, I mean it can get ridiculous. Whenever I used to play this game, most of the levels felt relatively leisurely, where I could take my time, train my creatures, and head out when I wanted. The enemy AI seems improved tenfold, as even the levels that I never ever had an issue with decided to shit all over my chest, but anyway. I remember the exact moment I first discovered and picked up Dungeon Keeper. My birthday had just passed and I'd received some money, so me and my mum set off to Big W, where I was told I was able to pick up three whole games. God, you should have seen my excitement. To give you an idea of how young I was at the time, the first two games were a Rugrats game and a Wild Thornberry's game, and then something caught my eye. A cool looking demon guy with an evil grin. Okay. Little did I know that this game would soon become my obsession and my first foray into proper video gaming. My brother even bought me a Dungeon Keeper jacket that he found a few years ago because of how obsessed with this game I used to be. Sadly, it's in storage and I couldn't find it for this video. We start the game and are greeted by the tiniest little cutscene in the world. Yes, I mean literally small. It filled the entire screen when the game was released, but on modern hardware, this is what I can give you. I will try and scale it up for you though. We follow a shiny knight upon his horse, entering a dungeon, getting royally bamboozled, and then swing off comes his head. A good introduction to the premise of the game. Starting a new game, a nice beautiful view of the realm of joy. Doesn't it look like such a peaceful and idyllic place to live? The sounds of birds chirping, the beautiful green lands and gorgeous water. Let's see what we can do about all that, shall we? Let's begin with the surprisingly hard music that I could listen to in the background of anything I do nowadays. It adds a ton of ambiance to the atmosphere of this game, the likes of which many games still struggle to achieve this to date. This along with Richard writing, a fantastic voice for level descriptions, and anything going wrong or right in your dungeons is a face for the ears. Ever smile. Set in the realm of joy, the people of Ever smile are plagued only by aching facial muscles, and not anthrax as we had hoped. Ever smile is a disgusting land of good humor and polite frivolity. Your gold reserves are running low. Have enough gold. A new spell has been researched. The sound design of creatures during battle can be deafening with every sound under the sun, seemingly playing at once, and makes every combat encounter or battle feel like the end of the world. 
It's a loud game. Every time I return to Dungeon Keeper, it kind of surprises me how it holds up in many aspects. No, it's not a modern AAA game with 4K photorealistic graphics, but the work done on the style or entire feel of the game is phenomenal, and in my opinion, is still 10 times more playable than a lot of games that are a bit newer than this one. Now I thought the best way to talk about basically everything to do with this game was to run through each level of the Dungeon Keeper campaign. We won't be covering deeper dungeons in this video, or it would be twice as long. A narrator lets us know the name of our first conquest, Ever Smile. As with every area's name, it's overly joyful and cutesy. We head into Ever Smile and get our first look at our pride and joy, and most important thing to us, our dungeon heart. This is the only thing that truly matters and it supports our entire dungeon, and if destroyed, we lose immediately and have to start the level again. This level acts as a tutorial to the game. I remember my first time playing it, I didn't read, I was a young child, so I had no idea what to do. Learned I could use my large evil hand to slap the imps, so slapped them until they died. Still didn't beat the level, and gave up to go and play the Rugrats game. I did eventually return though. You'll be introduced to your main workforce, your imps, which are used to mine out tunnels and rooms for you, fortify walls, mine, and collect gold, and basically anything menial. Without them, you would be doomed. But don't even try to enter them into a fight, as they're literally the weakest creatures in the game, and will 99% of the time run from any fight unless it's against another imp, or directly next to your dungeon heart, which they'll protect with their lives. You also get your first room, the treasure room, where gold is stored to be used for other nefarious means. The lair, which I always thought looked a bit like a brain, and the hatchery follow soon after giving your creatures a place to sleep and eat whole live chickens, which was insane to me as a child. The interesting part about the lair is that most of the creatures have their own unique looking lair, which matches what type of creature they are. Most of the creatures also have a unique animation when eating in the hatchery. You'll be prompted to tunnel up and claim your first portal, which is where creatures will spawn from when the correct room requirements are met. Within Eversmile you'll gain access to both flies and beetles, two of the weakest units in the game. The fly is used often for scouting and will explore the map when given the chance, revealing the fog of war and often getting itself into fights it can't win. The beetle is a bit more docile and usually just sleeps unless given a task. You also have access to the Create Imp spell, which gets more expensive with each imp, and the Possess spell, which is used to take control of a creature and use them in first person to do your bidding, which felt amazing back in the day to explore your whole dungeon in first person and even fight the heroes off with your strongest creature. When using this possession spell, you'll most likely realise for the first time that every creature has its own name, most of which appear unique, which gives a bit of extra personality and affection to each creature. Most creatures won't do specific tasks unless you pick them up and drop them on the room you want them to occupy, instead often just wandering around or sleeping and eating. Some creatures do have specific tasks that they do by default unless you ask them to do something else. Soon you'll be informed that heroes have learnt of your presence and are on their way to get rid of you. You should probably fortify your walls to stop them from getting in, as they have dwarves who are able to dig as your imps do, meaning they can tunnel into your dungeon if you're not careful. But you do have to let them in eventually, and when you do, you better have a handful of beetles and flies to drop directly on them. The first wave will consist of dwarves and thieves, easy enough. You'll notice you'll get a new tab at the bottom of the screen when combat starts, helping you to keep a slight eye on the combat taking place, even though it constantly changes and adjusts units as more enter or leave the battle. As I did mention briefly before, you'll learn more and more as the levels go on that the battles are the loudest and most insane thing you've ever possibly heard, with endless amounts of screaming, the sounds of dying, the narrator telling you that your minions are attacking the enemy, and your minions are falling in battle as well as the sounds of explosions, noxious gas, and so much more all at once. At times, you go deaf, but making battles feel like the end of the world. Then, after a brief wait, you'll be faced with the Lord of the Land, who has to be defeated in pretty much any hero level in order to complete it. He is a knight, like is seen in the opening cutscene, and puts up more of a fight than any enemy you've experienced to this point, but being the first level, you'll easily get rid of him, and that's Ever Smile conquered. 
you'll see once conquered that the previously green and beautiful landscape is now covered in lava and is dark and ominous and almost evil looking, just the way it should be. Now we're on a roll, let's see what Cozyton has to offer. Entering this level, you'll immediately see there's more gold on the map, but why? You're tasked with building your three rooms from the previous levels and claiming the neutral portal once again. But once you've done this, you'll gain access to a brand new and possibly the most important room in the game, the training room. The training room is where you'll send your creatures in order to level them up and become much more powerful. Training a creature uses gold which can be seen popping up from them as they train. Each creature costs a different amount, with the more powerful creatures being very expensive to train. Creatures all level up at different speeds as well, with the max level being level 10. This room also attracts what was my favourite creature as a child, that being the demon spawn. We went from bugs in the last level to a literal demon child in level 2. How could you not love it? The demon spawn will automatically make its way into the training room even if you don't drop it in there, meaning unless you have another task for it to do, it will be using your hard earned money. But it's also the most powerful creature we have so far, so train it up as best you can because there's heroes on the way. This time with more numbers than last, but they're still at level 1 and are no match for your demon spawns. Eventually the lord of the land will appear again, but you'll take him down very quickly, and that's Cozyton taken care of. You also might have noticed at this point that you pretty much have to drop your creatures directly on the enemy. This isn't like an RTS where you can just click and drag or make them go where you want them to. It's more of a dungeon sim, as mentioned before, so yeah, literally grabbing them, dropping them on an enemy. If not, they can eliminate your dungeon heart without any of your creatures even caring. Water Dream Warm is our next conquer, jumping right into this disgustingly good land. This level introduces a few more interesting game concepts. If you look to the far left of the map, you can see a little hidden room. If you tunnel all the way here, you'll be rewarded with a free training room and even two neutral skeletons, which when one of your creatures goes near them, they'll be converted to your side. The skeletons remain pretty powerful creatures all through the game. You'll also unlock the library which can be used to research new spells and rooms and also attract the dangerous and powerful warlock, who, when trained up, gains access to a strong variety of spells that can be used to assault enemies from afar. The warlock also hates other creatures being in the library, so when he's level 2 or above, he'll often shoot a fireball at your other creatures to scare them out. You'll also be able to research the speed spell, which when used on a creature causes them to move faster and do whatever job they're doing at a more productive rate. Since you gain the spellcasting warlock, the enemy will also have its first ranged unit in this level called the archer, who will be able to fire arrows at you from a distance while his allies are up close and personal. As usual, finish off all the heroes along with the lord of the land and we move on. This time to flower hat. This level was the first level that really provided any threat or worry to my younger self, which I now see is unnecessary. But if you tunnel too far north too early, the enemy has a stronghold across lava which you cannot pass, with archers on the other side firing arrows at your imps as soon as they break through. Due to this increased enemy threat, the game gives you one of the most valuable things in the game, an unlimited gold vein, which can be mined for all eternity for as much gold as your imps can carry. This means you'll be able to build and train as much and for as long as you want before taking on the stronghold, especially since this is the first level where the enemies won't come tunneling for you. I remember when I was a kid, I literally trained up all of my creatures to level 10 just to take out these level 1 enemies. You'll unlock a new room called the workshop, which is used to manufacture traps and doors for your dungeon, making it harder and more perilous for enemies to enter your dungeon and also allowing you to lock doors in order to prevent your own creatures from entering certain areas. You'll gain access to the wooden door and poison gas traps. The workshop will also attract the stupid yet helpful troll, who loves manufacturing in the workshop, but is too dumb to work in the library at all. On the flip side, the warlock will not enter the workshop no matter how much you're willing to pay him. As you research in the library, you'll also gain the use of the call to arms spell, which can be used to rally all of your creatures around a specific point, costing nothing if cast on your own land, but draining your gold if cast on enemy land or neutral ground, and also the heal creatures spell, which is pretty self-explanatory. 
The most important thing you'll research is a new room called Bridge, which can be used to traverse water or lava, meaning you can finally enter that stronghold and take out those heroes. A new enemy called a Barbarian with his giant hammer and bulging muscles will be across the lava ready to greet you as well. These guys can deal a good chunk of damage, so be careful. The other thing that can be found around this level is special boxes which grant bonuses. You can find two that increase your creature's level by one, and one that actually takes an enemy hero and converts them to your side. Even a transfer creature special can be found, which is used to take literally any of your creatures to the next level with you, which is ridiculously OP, especially in the early game. Flower Hat is also the first level with an enemy hero dungeon heart, which must be destroyed along with the Lord of the Land in order to win. You can also find a hidden new creature in this level if you tunnel through the gold seam above the enemy heart and make your way to the utmost top of the map, you'll find some neutral spiders that will join you. But keep in mind, the spider and the fly are natural enemies, and if they're found in the same lair, they will fight to the death. Lush Meadow on down, or level number 5, which I've always referred to it as, because I found it much easier to remember the numbers of the levels rather than the names, is up next, and this level introduces a whole new element to Dungeon Keeper, and that being Enemy Keepers. That's right, you're not the only evil bastard down here, you have others to contend with. If you're able to tunnel to the middle of the map early on, you'll see a gigantic river of lava, far greater than the one from level 4. But in the middle is a brand new neutral room known as the prison, with two neutral spiders and a brand new, ridiculously powerful creature known as the bile demon. If you're able to get here before the enemy player, you can claim both the prison and the creatures for yourself, giving you a distinct advantage. Now that you have the prison, you'll see the option to enslave enemy creatures instead of killing them. Some creatures can starve to death in the prison, meaning they'll come back as skeletons on your side. That's right, we finally have a way to get our own skeletons. The new Bile Demon and the Skeleton are model enemies though, so again, if they're in the same lair, they will fight to the death. Also, don't forget your library where you can research the Sight of Evil spell, which is used to spy on areas of the map that you haven't discovered yet, and also the Guard Post, which creatures can be dropped into in order to guard a certain location or position. As expected, the big goal of this level is to defeat the enemy keeper's dungeon heart. This usually means making a bridge up to their dungeon and dropping every creature on their head, then using the call to arms spell to lead them into the enemy dungeon as they try to drop every one of their creatures on your head to stop you. But being the first enemy keeper, it's not too hard. I think Snuggle Bell for me was actually the first level that I lost on my first attempt as a kid. Let me tell you why. Again, you're up against another keeper, but that wasn't the issue. The issue was that I didn't know if I tunnel too far down, the map opens to a large area filled with water. Okay, fine. Water. Not a problem, right? Wrong. The water is filled with a collection of fairies from the hero team that I didn't even know existed on this level, but level 1 fairies aren't a threat at all, right? They are when you haven't claimed your portal or built any rooms yet. But all that aside, they're easy enemies as soon as you have a handful of creatures, and you'll be glad that you tunneled down early, because a brand new room known as the Torture Chamber can be found with a handful of neutral new creatures called Mistresses. The Torture Chamber can be used to convert enemy units to your side, or to make them reveal information about the enemy's base. If you torture them to the point where they die, they will turn into a new creature called a ghost who will join your side. The Torture Chamber also attracts these new Mistresses, who are one of the most destructive creatures in the game. When they reach higher levels, they will gain access to the lightning and drain abilities, which absolutely melt most enemies. If you want to hear something in the game that is possibly louder and more disturbing than the battles, drop a few different creatures into the torture chamber, and they will scream their lungs out, as well as most of them having unique animations in the torture chamber, some of which look ridiculously painful. You can also manufacture the new lightning trap and braced door in the workshop and research the lightning spell in the library. There are also a handful of those special boxes in the level 2, including increased level, make safe which fortifies all your walls and again a transfer creature. But make short sure work of this keeper and let's move on. I don't think you understand how many times I've played the first 6 levels of this game. Let me tell you why. I didn't know you could save the game. Yeah that's right. My little dumb child brain was more troll than warlock, 
and I didn't know what the save icon was, meaning I'd get on Dungeon Keeper, run through levels 1 to 6, then get stuck here on Wishvale, the 7th level. For a few weeks I'd say this was an issue. God, how have I lived this long? The reason I got continually stuck on this level is that I had literally zero idea that there was an enemy keeper hidden away on the other side of the map. I'd head in, defeat the heroes, then be so confused why the level didn't end. You'll be placed in the center of the map, with a slightly pre-carved out dungeon and a little bit of gold. When you tunnel out a little, you'll realize you're completely surrounded by lava on all sides, and then unclaimed territory of enemies. Now something happens on this level that I'm still not sure why, but I'm sure it could be easily explained by consulting the wiki, but sometimes there are a handful of enemy heroes, nothing new or difficult, followed by the standard Lord of the Land. But at other times, a massive wave of enemies will spawn, with new heroes such as wizards, but not always. I'm sure it's a timing thing or a certain trigger, but sometimes it happens and other times it doesn't. With the limited gold on this level, I don't usually claim the portal and instead use my transferred creature, often the mistress from the last one, to research the prison and torture chamber. Then head out and convert the enemy heroes to my side, giving you your first taste of these new units and how they act. You can also unlock the new barracks room which is used to group units together and will attract the orc. Once you learn of the enemy keeper, then this level isn't too difficult, but my god it took me forever as a child. After that level, any others should feel pretty simple, right? Uh, well, Tickle has also got to be very hit or miss for me. Don't get me wrong, it's a good level, but half the time the enemy keeper just sits on his ass and does nothing, the other half he comes out swinging and whoops you as hard as he possibly can. If you accidentally mine through the gold to the top left of your dungeon heart, you'll be onslaughted by some much more dangerous fairies who will shoot lightning and fuck you up if you're not prepared. There is also a collection of hero barbarians up from that, with one neutral barbarian that you can claim if you make it there quickly. You'll be able to unlock the temple, which you can make sacrifices to, which will either reward you or punish you. Two of the most important sacrifices to remember are if you drop handfuls of imps into the temple, the cost of making imps will reduce. This means if you keep spamming this, you can get it to the point where making imps only costs 150 gold and you can basically max out your imps. If you drop a troll, bile demon and a mistress into the temple, you'll get the second strongest unit in the entire game, the horned reaper, or horny as he is referred. This scythe wielding lunatic is literally the big face on the box and will annihilate anything he comes across, but he will get angry faster than any other creature and no matter how hard you try, he'll eventually get pissed off and just start killing all of your creatures. He also costs a ridiculous amount of gold to train and pay, so more often than not, despite being ludicrously strong, he's not always worth having around. You can also research the invisibility spell and the protect spell through the library, as well as the ability to manufacture the new iron door in the workshop. If you explore the far right side of the map, you'll discover an area with two neutral demon spawns and two creatures called hellhounds. The hellhounds are like the much better versions of the fly for scouting, but will fight the demon spawn in the lair. Your goal again is to kill the handful of heroes and destroy the enemy keeper's dungeon heart. Along the way there are more hidden secrets, including a secret world, which will unlock an optional new level to play through at any time, but we'll talk about these later. Level 9 is one of my favourite levels in the game, Moonbrush Wood. This is our first snow or ice level. Here you'll be facing hero units, but they are significantly more leveled up than you faced before, meaning you'll have to be prepared before entering combat. You can finally gain access to the graveyard room on this level. If you get your imps to drag dead bodies to this room, eventually a vampire will be born. The vampires are one of my favourite creatures due to their unique ability to just not die. Once they get above level 4, if you kill a vampire, it'll just return to its lair one level lower than it was previously, meaning the enemy would have to kill them about 6 times repeatedly to fully finish them off from level 10. This makes them, obviously, such a powerful unit. The vampires will fight your warlocks in a lair though, so keep them separated. You'll also gain access to the disease spell, which when cast on an enemy, will infect all nearby creatures or heroes alike, damaging them over time, as well as the hold audience spell, which will bring all of your creatures directly to your dungeon heart. There's a decent handful of new heroes to encounter on this level as well. These include a powerful wizard, if you didn't come across them in Wishvale, 
A priestess who is a powerful and obnoxious spellcaster that will cast a wind spell if you get too close, causing every creature and hero to be blown back to the other side of the bloody map. The giant, who is just a big lumbering tank who also hits hard, and one of my favourite hero units, the samurai. Of course, all of these heroes can be tortured and converted to your side in order to try them out if you want, but beware, the samurai hates the mistress and they will fight till the end. I believe this level is also one of the first where if you level up your demon spawn past level 10, he will turn into a level 5 dragon which is a massive upgrade. On that same note, if you level up the thief hero unit past level 10, he'll become a level 3 knight or lord of the land as you may know him. Now you've started gaining access to some of the more powerful and <coughs> expensive creatures. You'll probably start to fully take note of payday, which is a constant countdown. When this countdown ends, all creatures except imps will head to the treasure room to grab the money they feel is owed to them, despite you taking care of them, feeding them, giving them a place to sleep, and more. This payment can rack up quite quickly if you're training lots of high level dragons, vampires, or other powerful beasties, and will keep occurring throughout the level until you complete it, meaning you'll have to make sure you have a constant source of gold, or finish the level quick enough that you don't run out. Once you defeat the four wizards of the land, the lord will spawn in the center of the gold seams. Be careful if you haven't already mined this out, as there is a lone hero vampire in there, who you should probably aim to deal with before taking on the knight and his gang. Nevergrim was always a level I considered very easy, and usually just used it to play around with the brand new scavenger room. The room can be found by claiming the land all the way to the right of your dungeon heart. The scavenger room is basically used to steal enemy creatures. Put a bile demon into the scavenger room, and if the enemy has bile demons, they will very slowly start leaving the enemy dungeon and converting to your side. It's such a fun room to use, and can leave the enemy with nothing. I'm not 100% sure what the intention behind giant squiggly eyeballs was, but it looks interesting. The scavenger room also attracts the hellhound that we found during the last level. Just be careful because in later levels, the enemy keepers will aggressively use this room to scavenge your creatures and there isn't really any counter to it. The sound it makes is also creepy and I love it. Your scavenger room is too small. Now I know that I mentioned how this level was very easy, but apparently in Keeper FX, this is not the case whatsoever, as the enemy keeper built a bridge to my dungeon very quickly and destroyed me on my first attempt, which is the first time that's ever happened on this level. There are also no walls besides those around your main heart, which means you can't fortify your walls to prevent the enemy from breaking in, as the whole map consists of a large lava river and some claimable land on each side. This level is also the first one where dragons can be obtained through the portals and there are a handful of neutral dragons and flies in this area to be claimed. You'll also gain access to the brand new cave in spell through library research and the boulder and lava traps. The boulder trap is super dangerous because it will kill almost any creature instantly whether it be friendly or an enemy. The lava trap on the other hand will turn solid ground into a lava tile if an enemy steps on it meaning you could, in theory, block off an entire area with lava. Now if you've been thinking the enemy keeper AI is kicking your ass until this point, you actually have the option to turn on your own AI assistance, which you can pick from a variety of options, including AI that will only move and slap your creatures, AI that will build and mine, an overall defensive AI, and an aggressive AI, whose sole goal is to attack the enemy. I literally never use these anymore, but they're actually quite fun for a fuck around level. Level 11 is Hearth, and this one will always live in infamy in my mind, because it is one of the few levels where you aren't given time to prepare or get ready, you don't get to choose when you venture out to face the enemy. Instead, your heart is surrounded on all sides by hero gates that will very soon start sending enemies into your base from everywhere, getting more and more powerful. It's only heroes in this level, but you'll be facing them and struggling the entire time, trying to fit in as much training as you can with the little time available. It's fully doable, but it feels stressful the whole time compared to what you'll likely be used to to this point. You'll gain access to the chicken spell, which turns an enemy into a chicken, causing them to run away and be unable to attack, and also the alarm trap, which will just make a big, loud, obnoxious noise when an enemy passes over it. 
Elf's Stance is where we start to get real aggressive and when the game basically fully stops holding your hand altogether. This level, for the first time, has two enemy keepers, located at the left and right side of the map while you're at the top. You'll also see an area down the bottom of the map which consists of a large number of weak level 1 heroes that can be easily converted to your side and used to take out these enemy keepers. The two keepers are locked behind opposite doors, which means you'll have the choice of when to attack them. But be warned, the longer you wait, the stronger they'll get, as they both have unlimited gem seams to mine gold forever. The purple keeper can technically mine to your dungeon on the left hand side of the map, which they actually did to me. But I managed to prevent this by putting down a lava trap and blocking the way for his imps. They will also both have boulder traps throughout their dungeon, meaning you're going to have to be very careful when going on the offensive. They also seem to be pretty aggressively trying to scavenge my units away from me, which I feel is caused by Keeper FX, because I don't remember this happening at all. The next level, Buffy Oak, is an even more version of the last, once again with two enemy keepers, but this time they're located right next to each other and are allied, meaning they won't attack each other, but instead only you. Your base is also already carved out completely, and your portals are open to the lava field separating you and the enemy, meaning they can bridge across and straight into your dungeon, and there isn't really anything you can do about it. You do get two portals, meaning extra creatures and one single gem seam, but with that amount of creatures, you'll still seem to run out of gold faster than you can mine it. Eventually, you might find a way to defeat the enemy keepers, but I can't blame you if this is your breaking point. Now for some reason I've never been able to put my finger on, Sleepy Borough feels like the level I've played literally less than any other level. Which makes no sense at all, due to the fact it's located in between levels I feel I've played 10 times more. You have quite a cool looking dungeon in this level, with lava around a majority of your dungeon heart. One of my favourite things to do as a kid on this level was to place lava traps around my dungeon heart so that it was inaccessible by enemies. You'll again be facing two keepers here, and also a small band of relatively hidden heroes at the top of the map. If you tunnel to the right of your heart, you'll come across a boulder trap blocking a door. When you make it past that, you'll come across a neutral workshop with a neutral level 10 troll inside, very valuable for those lava traps I mentioned. In the workshop is another door where you can claim yourself a neutral level 1 horned reaper, which is technically the first time you can find one without using the temple. The enemy keepers in this level usually kept to themselves in my experience, blocking their base off so you couldn't get in. That's why this level gives you access to the wall breach spell that allows you to break down enemy fortified walls which were previously impossible. But playing on Keeper FX, once again the computer players went absolutely hard, mining out everything they could and causing me to be the one who had to fortify my dungeon. I didn't end up needing the spell at all. As a matter of fact, I took a completely new and previously unused tactic for this level. I took a single imp, cast the invisibility spell on him, and just slowly let him claim every tile and room of both enemy keepers. This allowed me to steal the lairs, hatcheries, and treasure rooms of their creatures, meaning they were unable to eat, sleep, or get paid, making them angry and causing them to constantly lose health. With the purple keeper, I also claimed their portal, meaning the creatures couldn't even leave. They just wandered around the map endlessly until they died of starvation or I finished them off. It felt a bit cruel, but it worked. I did the same thing with the green keeper, but left their portal so that the creatures could just leave. I ran into the issue that they had a few vampires and ghosts, which could see invisible creatures, so I had to work around them. But this method made this level insanely easier than it should have been, and I didn't end up losing creatures throughout the whole level. Once both keepers were dead, the Lord of the Land spawn, and I locked him and his posse on a bridge and melted them with my army of level 10 mistresses. Woodley Rhyme is another two keeper level with a handful of heroes strewn throughout the middle of the map. You can quite easily stay to yourself at the top half of the map as long as you watch where you dig and don't mind too far down to enter the water. If you do accidentally reach the water, you can place a guard post on the water's edge which will prevent enemy creatures from getting over it unless they can fly or a bridge is built, which the AI never seemed to do on this level. There's a few hidden skeletons and ghosts on this level, along with one bile demon which is the only available one on this map unless you scavenge them I believe. There's a hidden room full of tons of specials in the middle of the map, but 95% of them are just make safe spells with one increased level and one hidden world special. There's quite a few little hidden rooms and areas on this map as well, so make sure you explore. 
You also gain access to the Word of Power trap, which blows enemies away with force as well as the craziest spell in the game called Armageddon. This spell grabs every single enemy unit and drops them on your dungeon heart, along with all of your units, removing your ability to pick up your own units and just having an all out brawl. If you're strong enough, you should win the level. If not, you'll get taken out in half a second. Level 16, Tulip Scent, is both an easy and a hard one to forget. On this level, you'll start with two Horned Reapers who are locked in their own little self-contained dungeons. You can choose to train them up and make them the driving force or just ignore them. The creature pool on this level for the player seems quite limited as it seems to take a while for new creatures to start coming in. This is especially concerning because the enemy keeper's base is attached to yours with only some doors to block them, and hero patrols will start coming very quickly, meaning you'll have to get your dungeon mined and fortified ASAP. If you dig in the wrong place, you'll break through to unclaimed area, which will almost certainly result in your immediate death by one of the many bands of heroes. You'll also start with the new spell called Obey, which makes creatures work more efficiently and increases the unit's speed at doing tasks and locks in their happiness, but it will cost gold per second, so keep an eye on it. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on all over this map, but if you can make it through, you'll get a brief respite from enemy keepers. Now I hope you're ready for another heavy wave based tower defense style level with Mirthshire. You'll have heroes charging at you from very very early. The only upside is that they're relatively low level enemies, but you've definitely got to claim a portal and draw your creatures in real quick to survive the initial onslaught. If not, walling yourself in with enough resources may also come in handy, but without the side of evil spell on this level, it's a bit hard to know where not to dig. One fun special on this level, which is also on the previous level but I often forget about it, is the Multiply Creatures special, which will literally duplicate every single creature you have. Meaning if you had 4 level 7 Bile Demons, you'll now have 8 level 7 Bile Demons. So if you can get this at a good time, you may have some success. The Lord of the Land will spawn at a set time, and is the only one who actually needs to be killed to win. So feel free to wait it out if you're feeling patient. But as you can probably see, if you wait it out in a walled off dungeon, you will have hundreds of waves of enemies surrounding you. Replaying this level was the first time I was able to dig out a complete base and fortify it before being invaded by enemies, meaning I had access to the gem seam and unlimited time to train my creatures while endless waves tried to find a way into my dungeon. I then doubled all of my level 10 creatures, opened the floodgates, and annihilated them all. Ho <laughs> ho, blaze end at last. One of the most memorable dungeon keeper levels of all time. You thought the hero only levels have been a bit difficult until this point? You have no idea. I do want to start off with my most memorable time on this level. I believe it was my first time beating it. I'd tunneled out a little far, broken into neutral ground. The enemies were starting to pour out of nowhere. Wandering bands of heroes, new heroes who spawned because I interrupted their sleep. Everyone was on their way directly to my dungeon heart. My creatures were no match. They were slaughtered one by one leaving me with nothing but a couple of imps in my hand. As they began to attack my dungeon heart, I felt nothing but pain and sorrow. And then, a peculiar little mining dwarf began to mine, but on my dungeon heart, he mined away a tile. This caused the heart itself to disappear, similar to when you remove a block in a 3x3 training room. I quickly dropped one of my two precious imps to distract him, and it was a worthy sacrifice, as he didn't return to mining. Instead, all of the heroes of the land were attacking where my dungeon heart used to be, but there was nothing for them to destroy, so I headed up to the middle of the map, where there was a portal and where I discovered and partially claimed out and dug previously. Here I was able to set up a brand new dungeon, luckily I'd already made it to the gem seam at the top of the map as well, and any hero who did come out from that point would head directly for my dungeon heart, completely ignoring my makeshift little base. Thank god I had secured the mineable gem seam early, through this I was able to claw my way back up to power and smite the heroes down with malice and vengeance. I felt like a god. But that was very lucky and convenient, and I've never had anything even close to that occur again. But yes, this level is very difficult, with constant bands of heroes, plenty of areas where new heroes can spawn if you get too close and a fully fledged hero fortress at the top of the map, complete with traps and endless enemies to face, 
This level is insane, but one of the most exciting in the game. If you hang around for too long, then more hordes of enemies will spawn, making your eventual venture into the unknown even more dangerous. But you'll have to head out sooner than later, because the gold near your base is very limited. I didn't even claim the portal this time round, because I transferred a level 10 mistress from the special level, and used her to scavenge 3 or 4 others, so that I ended up with a small army of max level mistresses. Then I proceeded to basically annihilate every enemy with them, throwing a collection of skeletons from all the dead heroes, and a few vampires, and it made the level pretty easy by the end. Missal, or level 19, is such a unique but in no way easy level. You'll start with a dungeon heart and a portal. Surrounding you is an old neutral dungeon that you'll be able to dig out and claim for yourself, giving you access to most rooms that you need, besides the all-important training room. That's right, you don't get a training room for the first half of this level, meaning you have to rely on the fact that you'll come across a neutral level 4 vampire while claiming your dungeon, and if you've had the foresight to transfer a creature from a secret level. You'll tunnel to the right of your heart and come across a handful of hero enemies including tentacles, archers, wizards, and others. If you make it through this handful of low-leveled enemies, you'll be rewarded with two neutral dragons and an unlimited gem seam. Now you may have been thinking that you'd just torture and convert all these heroes to your side, since you can't train your existing creatures. But unfortunately, you've not been given a healing spell, meaning it's almost certain the heroes will die and return as ghosts before converting. If you thought that letting them starve in prison and becoming a skeleton was a better alternative, you'll learn the real hard way, that the enemy keeper is scavenging skeletons like they're the only thing that matters on the planet, meaning you'll lose any skeletons within minutes. If you tunnel up from your dungeon, you'll encounter a few more groups of heroes, but also the very exciting and sought after heal spell, which you can use to help convert any remaining heroes. I managed to scavenge almost all of the heroes out of the main hero dungeon to my side using a combo of heroes that I'd converted and the steel hero special items. After this, march up into the hero's dungeon heart, where the lord of the land and his posse of samurai will spawn as a last ditch effort to stop you. Wipe them and the dungeon heart out and claim your prizes, the beautiful sight of a training room and the destroy walls spell. Finally, head to the right and annihilate the pathetic keeper who should stand no chance against your hordes of hero units. Skybird Trill, level 20, the final battle of the main campaign. Greeted by news of the Avatar, you should be terrified, because this is the one and only level where this monstrous hero enemy appears. He is by far the most powerful unit in almost every regard in the entirety of Dungeon Keeper. But let's worry about him in a second. When you spawn, you'll have a regular dungeon with not much dug out. Build your dungeon, but don't tunnel up too far or you'll get shit on by a group of level 10 tentacles. The game will let you attract a decent collection of dragons and bile demons, being some of the more powerful creatures, you'll be pretty happy about this. But whatever you do, don't build a graveyard, as any vampire you acquire will be almost instantly scavenged from you by the enemy keeper. I also had regular problems with the enemy keeper scavenging my dragons, and despite having many max level dragons in my own scavenging room, they still managed to steal a couple. When you do eventually decide to dig up, there is a neutral dungeon for you to destroy which is littered with a handful of rooms and traps, as well as some neutral insects, and once defeated, a level 10 Horn Reaper for you. If you proceed up the small passageway on the right side of the map, you come to the side of the Enemy Keeper's dungeon, and there, the Avatar, chilling in prison. Be careful, because he's not actually imprisoned and will attack on sight. The one saving grace is he can't walk through lava. In the past, I've assaulted him with two level 10 Horned Reapers and still gotten destroyed. You'll need almost your whole force of creatures to take down his enormous health pool mixed with his healing ability. On my replay, the enemy Keeper only just beat me to the Avatar, killing him off before I could get to him. This causes literally countless and endless amounts of max level heroes to spawn all over the map and head straight into your base, including a revived version of the Avatar. They wiped out every one of my creatures and my dungeon heart within minutes. The best way to handle this is to learn where they spawn, and then fortify those areas so they can't get out. Or, if they can, then place endless traps or doors for them to get past, or even place guard posts on the edge of the water to prevent them from leaving. 
Once you eventually make it through them all, you'll be able to imprison and convert all of them, including the avatar to your side to eliminate the pesky and final keeper, and thus level of dungeon keeper. Well those 20 levels went from simple to ridiculous very quickly, but we have a handful of secret levels that may have been discovered on your journey through the main campaign. These secrets can be done multiple times, and are best done before a level that you've been unable to transfer a creature to, because each secret level provides a different high level creature and a transfer creature box. These secret levels have been moved around a little in Keeper FX, so they might not be in the correct order. Starting off with secret 1, and in my opinion the hardest. Now keep in mind if you're playing this level in the base game and not Keeper FX, there's actually no transfer creature special, meaning you have no reason to do this grueling level. You'll start with a lone dragon, and no imps or gold, and only a possession spell available to you. You must possess the dragon, and take on a perilous quest through the lava, doors and multiple enemies, until you reach a neutral bio demon. From here you'll switch possession to him, wading through poison gas traps and more dangerous enemies. Following the bio demon, you'll gain access to a powerful mistress who has the most dangerous task of avoiding endless boulder traps with tons of enemies. When you eventually make it through the onslaught, you'll finally encounter your vampire, who you will have to trek through a ridiculous amount of powerful and dangerous enemies with. And just keep in mind, the way to beat this level is to defeat all enemies. Yeah, I said this was the hardest one. By the end, you'll have a level 10 vampire to transfer to any level with you. Secret 2 is a whole lot easier. You'll start with 50 imps, which you are required to kill in a short time limit. Best way for this is destroying the door to the left, where you'll come to a handful of enemy imps that will kill a few of yours. Then dig up from there and find a boulder trap or two, so that you can wipe out a decent amount of imps. If you also dig down, there will be another boulder for you. Finally, if you dig through just behind the two boulders, an enemy hellhound will be waiting to kill your imps. He'll head straight to your dungeon heart, meaning you can just drop imps on him as they'll always fight if it's next to your heart. Let the hellhound finish them off, 10 more imps will spawn, so get them killed and be rewarded with two level 10 mistresses. One of which you can transfer with you. I basically used this level to transfer every single time I could. Secret 3 might feel familiar, as you'll need to kill another collection of imps. This time you'll have to head to the top of the map and you'll find a friendly horned reaper. Chuck him in a small locked room, slap the shit out of him and make him angry. Then drop your imps in a handful at a time and let the horned reaper murder all of them. God, it's kind of fucked up, hey? At the end, you'll be rewarded with a level 6 Hellhound, which you can use the 4 increased level specials on, or you can even bring the Horned Reaper with you if you'd prefer. Secret 4, you'll start off with one Imp and a Skeleton, dig out a small section towards the north, then possess the Skeleton and attempt to make it through the level, avoiding traps and killing heroes. This one's relatively short, and at the end you'll get a level 9 Priestess for your troubles. Finally, Secret Level 5 is also quite a difficult one. You'll start with a level 1 demon spawn and an imp. You'll have to make your way through the level, killing enemies and finding increased level specials. There's enough on this level to get your demon spawn all the way up to a level 10 dragon, but getting there is a difficult trek. I'll be honest that I cheated on this level and brought the horned reaper from secret 3 to it to make the level noticeably easier, but it still wasn't particularly easy altogether. Well, we covered 25 entire levels of the original Dungeon Keeper game, and almost every aspect from creatures, rooms, traps, spells, and plenty more that is included. There is a large collection of multiplayer maps that can be played single player against AI Keepers, and also the Full Moon special level that can be only played on a full moon, of which I missed a day or two before writing this, but it's a ridiculously difficult level without enough of a reward to worry about. Honestly, it was an absolute blast playing through this childhood game all over again, but I did kind of lie at the beginning of the video. This is because I come back and replay this game basically fully every few years. Most of the levels and aspects of the game I basically know back to front, because this game is fantastic and in my opinion, utterly timeless. It has sat within my top games of all time since I was a child and I don't think it's ever leaving that incredibly prestigious position. It was a fun video to make, being able to talk about my childhood, but also modern day experiences with this masterpiece to an audience of an undisclosed amount just brings me joy. This game kickstarted my lifelong hobby and love of gaming, and I'd love to hear which game did that for you. I have nowhere near as much experience with deeper dungeons, but would love to deep dive into it for a video if everyone wants to see that. 
as well as a possible future video covering Dungeon Keeper 2 and maybe even War for the Overworld and other similar modern adaptations on the Dungeon Keeper formula. I hope everyone enjoyed this video, or at least got something out of it. I know it was incredibly long for a non-Let's Play video, and I'm sure the version of myself editing this is going to hate me, but it had to be done, and I hope I did the game justice in some small manner. Love you all, and peace out.